I'm going to show you the family tree of the Rothschild family, one of the wealthiest families in world history, as well as one of the most controversial. This video is part one of a two-part collaboration with fellow YouTuber Mr. Beat. In part one, I'll be focusing primarily on the family tree and introducing you to some of the more well-known members of the Rothschild dynasty. In part two, Mr. Beat, a social studies teacher, will be delving deeper into the family's history and discussing some of the many conspiracy theories that have come to be associated with their name. So first of all, the name Rothschild comes from the German for red shield. It's a reference to the fact that the family originally used a red shield as an identifying mark on their house. Their story begins in Germany with this individual here, Meyer Amschel Rothschild, who was initially a dealer in rare coins and an apprentice banker. However, things really took off for him because of a special relationship he had with a German prince, William IX of Hesse Kassel. That prince appointed Meyer to be his court Jew. A court Jew was actually an official position in those days. Because Christians were prohibited from certain types of money lending, nobles would often hire a Jew to fulfill this role. So Meyer ended up managing the money for one of the richest princes in Europe, and by doing so, he himself became very rich as well. Eventually, he started managing money for other princes, and even entire governments. By this point, he had several adult sons. So what he did was he created a Rothschild bank, and he sent each of his five sons to a different capital in Europe to run a branch there. His eldest son, Amschel, ran the original branch in Frankfurt, and then his son Solomon was sent to Vienna, Nathan to London, Carl to Naples, and James to Paris. The family then developed a network of agents that allowed for safe and speedy transfer of gold across the continent, as well as for ease of communication between the various branches. This made all five branches extremely successful. However, the London branch was perhaps the most successful of all. During the Napoleonic Wars, Nathan almost single-handedly financed the entire British war effort and took care of paying British troops and their allies across the continent. There's a well-known legend that the family made their millions by taking advantage of the fact that they received word of Napoleon's defeat one day ahead of everyone else in London. But that story is not actually true. Although they did receive word of the defeat before everyone else, they didn't actually make money off that fact. What they did make money off of is accurately predicting what would happen in European markets over the next several years and making the right investments based on those predictions. So by the 1820s, the Rothschilds were the wealthiest family in Europe, and they continued to be hugely influential within the world of international finance throughout the 19th century. The five brothers were given the title of Baron by the Emperor of Austria, which is why you often see the German Von, or a French De, before their last name. Nathan, being based outside of the continent, was one of the few that did not use the title. So let's look at the third generation Rothschilds. Almost all of the males in the third generation married one of their female first cousins. This ensured that the dynasty's wealth stayed within the family. So, for example, Anselm, the firstborn son of Solomon, married his cousin Charlotte, the daughter of Nathan. 
He's shown in yellow because he's from the Austrian branch, and she's shown in red because she's a member of the British branch. Likewise, Lionel, the firstborn son of Nathan, married his cousin, also named Charlotte, but she was a daughter of Carl from the Italian branch. So let's look at each one of these branches in turn. The eldest son never married, so when he died, the original Frankfurt branch was taken over by two of the sons of Carl from the Italian branch, these two individuals here. The middle son took over the Italian branch, but none of these individuals had heirs, so eventually both the Frankfurt branch and the Naples branch closed. Let's look at the Austrian branch next. With the death of Amschel Rothschild, the Austrian branch became the senior branch, and the eldest son of Solomon became the most senior male in the family. By the time we get to the fourth generation, these people were born directly into extreme wealth. Therefore, some of them weren't necessarily interested in the hard work of running a major bank. They were more interested in collecting art, building mansions, and pursuing their hobbies. This was the case for the firstborn son, Nathaniel. The second son, Ferdinand, actually moved to Great Britain and eventually served as a member of Parliament there. So it was the third son, named Albert, who ended up taking over the Austrian branch. He married a cousin from the French branch. From there, Albert's sons took over the business in Vienna. On the chart, I've only shown one of these sons, but there were a few others as well. However, the fortunes of this entire branch of the family declined quickly in the 20th century due to three major events. First of all, Austria lost World War I, and therefore many of their debtors defaulted on their loans. Second, they were hit hard by the Great Depression, and in fact were one of the first banks to declare bankruptcy. Third, and most devastating of all, most of their assets were seized when the Nazis came to power. In fact, one of the brothers, Louis de Rothschild, who I've shown here, was captured by the Nazis and ransomed for $21 million. That's almost $350 million in today's dollars, perhaps the largest ransom ever paid. The last male member of the Austrian branch died in 1976, which is why the British branch is currently the most senior branch today. But we're going to skip the British branch for now and quickly look at the last two branches first. I've already mentioned that the Italian branch eventually fizzled out. They intermarried with the British branch, though, so their legacy lives on through that connection. That leaves the French branch. That branch is the only one other than the senior British branch that still exists today. It started with James, the youngest of the five original brothers. He married his niece, Betty, who was the daughter of his brother Anselm. They had four sons, three of whom have male line descendants still living today. The third son, Solomon, actually ended up in America. The idea was that he might eventually start a branch there, but Solomon died young and an American branch never did come to exist. The youngest son, Edmund, was a big supporter of the early Zionist movement. Long before the Holocaust and decades before the British occupation of Palestine, Edmund purchased land from the Ottomans and helped fund the first Jewish settlement in what is today the state of Israel. His son James would later bequeath the funds that went on to be used to build the Knesset building in Jerusalem, which today houses the Israeli parliament. 
However, the main branch of the French family is this one here. It is currently led by David de Rothschild. In 2003, the main Rothschild company in France merged with the main Rothschild company in Britain, with David being made chairman. So, in terms of the actual business side of the Rothschild empire, David, this individual here, is kind of the head of the family. He also serves as the chairman of the World Jewish Congress, an international organization based in New York that represents Jewish diplomatic interests across the globe. Okay, I've left the British branch for last because it was the most successful. It is currently the senior branch, and it's the branch that people in the English-speaking world are most familiar with. It starts with Nathan Rothschild, third son of Meyer Amschel. As I mentioned earlier, he earned a lot of money for the family's firm in the years following Napoleon's defeat. What's less known, though, is he was also involved in ending slavery in the UK, using millions of dollars to help buy and free slaves. Nathan had four sons. Two of them were engaged in politics as well as finance and served as members of parliament. Initially, Lionel was elected but unable to sit in parliament because he was a Jew. However, laws were changed, and in 1958, he became the first Jew to actually sit in Parliament, his brother Meyer and his son Nathan joining him shortly thereafter. I'll also point out this brother here, Anthony. He was the first Rothschild to be granted a British hereditary title. He was made a baronet, which is slightly lower than a baron and meant that he was still a commoner, but it was an important title nonetheless. He did not have any sons, though, so his title passed to his nephew, Nathan. Nathan was later upgraded to the title of baron and thus became the first Rothschild to become a member of the British nobility and also the first Jew to sit in the House of Lords. Nathan, as the senior most heir of his grandfather Nathan, was also head of the British branch, like his father was before him. He was also involved in funding Cecil Rhodes, founder of Rhodesia and the De Beers Diamond Company. You'll notice here that Nathan married a cousin from the Italian branch of the family. He was followed by his son Walter, who was the second Baron Rothschild. Like his father and grandfather, he too served as a member of Parliament. He is mostly remembered for his association with the Balfour Declaration, which he helped to write and which was presented to him in 1917 by the British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour. It was the first official statement by the British government in support of the creation of a national homeland for the Jewish people in Palestine. However, not all of the Rothschilds were Zionists. This cousin here, who also served as an MP, was actually against the creation of a Jewish state, and he created the League of British Jews to oppose it. But back to Walter. Walter had no legitimate children, so the next Baron Rothschild was his nephew. Victor. Victor was a member of MI5 during World War II and was an advisor to many British Prime Ministers up to and including Margaret Thatcher, although at one point he was suspected to be a Soviet spy. He, however, was cleared of those charges. He was followed by his son, Jacob who is the fourth and current Baron Rothschild, currently also the most senior male member descendant of Meyer Amschel Rothschild. He has a son named Nathaniel, who will one day become the fifth Baron. 
It is Jacob's face that is often seen in the many conspiracy theory videos about the Rothschilds. Let me point out a few other interesting connections. Jacob has a half-sister who is a Harvard professor and married to Nobel Prize winning economist Amartya Sen. He also has a half-brother who married into the Guinness family. Yes, the family of beer and Book of Records fame. They had three children. Their son married into the Hilton family of hotel fame and is the brother-in-law of Paris Hilton. Their daughters married the Goldsmith brothers, one of whom is currently a British MP. On the business side of things, the running of the actual company established by Nathan Rothschild eventually came to be run by this branch of the family here. Most recently, Evelyn Rothschild, who also served as the personal financial advisor to Queen Elizabeth. In the 1980s, there was a family feud between Jacob and Evelyn that ended in Jacob leaving the original company. Later, after Evelyn retired, the British firm eventually merged with the French branch, as I mentioned earlier, and is currently being run by David de Rothschild. If you go to their website, Rothschild.com, you'll notice that there are links to two main Rothschild companies. Rothschild & Co. is that original company started by Nathan, now run by David de Rothschild. Edmund de Rothschild is a company run by a junior part of the French branch and is currently run by Benjamin de Rothschild. You can see that the company name is named after his father. Interestingly, if you do a search on the Forbes list of billionaires, he's the only member of the Rothschild family that you will find. So that was a quick look at the Rothschild dynasty. Are they super rich? Yes, they certainly are. Do they?